Hey folks, so we have an entirely new background today, as you may notice. So we haven't done a tour of the Meadow House yet on Flock or a houseplant home tour here, but we will probably next month, I would say in October sometime. But today I wanted to do some more designs for the Meadow House. So we have some areas in the Meadow House where there's not a tremendous amount of light. There's some light that comes in on a Western facing, but for the most part, it's relatively shady. And from my home in Brooklyn, I saw that some of my moss terrariums actually grow exceptionally well in more of the interior of the space. And they really are an example of something that you don't have to take care of too much. Of course, you have to go and water them from time to time. And if you have a lid that's opened, maybe airing it out a little bit. So I'd found this beautiful glass. I liked how it had this like wavy edge to it because you can't see things totally clearly it blurs a little bit so it kind of looks a little trippy so i thought that could be kind of cool and it had a nice brass top which a lot of the hardware in the meadow house which you can't see yet is uh is kind of this brass so i liked that continuity within the design of that so i have more than enough than what i need to put in here but it's nice to have a little bit more than less and i could already tell you a couple things that i am not going to be able to use in this particular glass terrarium. So those are these stones, which I absolutely love. And my goal with them was to create like a little terrarium with them or like a little diorama. But I could already tell you, look, like the size of this hole and this stone, it's just not gonna go in there. So we aren't going to use those at all. In fact, I'm gonna use this to kind of prop uh, the uh, organic uh, potting medium cactus mix up. But if you, you know, consider that, especially if you're going to use a terrarium, like I would obviously need something with a wider mouth and this one has a much thinner mouth, but I had to kind of, you know, go with the design of it. And that's okay because I have a lot of smaller things. So I have some of these really cool uh, fossils that I have, so these like old, Terra fern-like fossils, and I have this like trilobite, which is pretty cool. And then I got these things, which I think are fun. Fun, you know, these are for you know typically fairy gardens. This one's probably going to be too big, but I have all three of them. I might go with the smallest one or maybe the medium one. But these actually glow in the dark, <laughs> which is so cool. So I figured if this gets a lot of light on it, these little spots on here on this, this mushroom actually starts to glow and it could be like a little nice night fixture. So if you think of like foxfire and like uh, some of the fung the bioluminescence fung fungi that grow like on birch trees and things like that, that could be kind of neat, even though these don't typically glow in the dark. If you probably consume them, they think that things glow in the dark. <laughs> But, and then I have some cool plants. So this one I just brought from my house in Brooklyn. It was kind of growing in this and I had it in a little pot. This is a Procris repens, Pelionia repens. This tends to grow like very gangbuster. So I might not actually plant that in. And I have two begonias that I got from Steve's Leaves. And Steve's Leaves is great because he gets these little uh, small plants that are perfect for terrariums. And I have a begonia gemella, which I wanted to get like begonias that had a little pop of color, like a little bit of a lighter green leaf, that's going to shine in kind of the dark, darker areas of the house. And I thought this one would be cool too. And this is um, Begonia Chlornura, which means green vein. And as you could see that here, and it has these, you know, kind of almost like trichomes coming up off of the leaf, these little red trichomes. So I think it's really an outstanding species of begonia because it almost looks like green lightning that comes through. In fact, I think that was actually a, um, a cultivar, Steve's Leaves Green Lightning, which I did not get for this. But they're small enough, and if you have to break them into two in order to be able to fit them in there, but I'm probably going to be able to fit one, or if I slice these into two, I could probably fit one of a piece in here. Then I have uh, some British soldiers. So this is a type of lichen. And there's another one I like to always collect, which is pixie cups. And somebody else collected this for me because I haven't been out and about, but I liked the red of the British soldiers and then actually going with this uh, psychedelic mushroom in there too, kind of matches. And then the reds of the Chlorinora and or the Gemella, I think really pulls through. Then I took some cuttings from my biopod and I have a, a Ficus velosa, which has a really nice fuzzy appearance. And then I have this uh, Ficus 
quercifolia, which I, I thought could be cool that just kind of lying it in there on the substrate and having it root in because it's very tiny, got a tiny leaf, and you, you're creating like a miniature diorama in here. And I thought those looked, looked you know, appropriate. Then I have two different kinds of mosses. You could go with so many different types of mosses. And I am no moss expert by any stretch of the imagination, but this is a wonderful substrate. So I have cushion moss over here, and then I have this mood moss over here, and you can see that it has slightly different textures and colors, but I think equally beautiful. And then let's talk about substrate because you know, typically you could put like pebbles or sometimes people put sand on the bottom. I'm not gonna do that because it kind of creates this false bottom. And uh, I don't really always like to see the pebbles. The pebbles could kind of get a little gunky. So I'm gonna go with all substrate, but I'm gonna go with a few different kinds of substrate. And I brought some things out here. I have like Espoma's cactus mix. I have their charcoal and I have their orchid mix, which is kind of a barkier mix that also has charcoal in it. So the charcoal helps prevent any kind of like bacterial buildup. So you could actually mix that in more and that's why I have it in there, although it's naturally in here. So you could see that they have these uh, chunks of wood and I might actually do that on the bottom. And then the cactus mix and putting a little bit of moisture in there already so it kind of firms it up a bit and it's easier to work with. And then I have something else. I have this kind of shaved pine bark and I thought, ooh, this looks really pretty for maybe like a topping. And I have a couple tools here. I have a very thin uh, spade and then I have some of these long tools that if I need to move things in here, these are also good for aquariums. I think you get, I could get a uh, you know, put that up on the screen or in the description of where I got these. Um, and then Steve's Leaves, I'll give you a discount for that too because I have a personal discount that you could use for Steve's Leaves and things like that. So you got a lot of good stuff here for creating terrariums. Um, and of course my spoons. <laughs> Kitchen spoons, always perfect for working in these uh, small environments, especially ones with long handles. So that's what we got here, and I think we're gonna get started. Might create a little bit of a mess on this nice new table, but I have this uh, you know, kind of water-resistant uh, uh, tablecloth here that kind of works. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of drop these in and start working. And uh, I have a general idea of how it's gonna look, but I'm always surprised with how it turns out. And again, it's a little bit of a challenge working with such a small hole, so when you do that, you risk making a little bit more of a mess. But I'm not gonna need a lot of substrate in here. And if I had one of those big stones, but a thinner stone that would work in here, then I would need probably less substrate. But I think that's even good enough right there if I just kind of move that around and even it out because there's not much growing space and you don't wanna to create too much of a false bottom in these because you know, you're gonna have these roots growing down and if you have too much stone, for instance, coming up, then it's most likely not going to, you know, grow through it. The fact that I'm lasagna layering things too make it a little bit harder for plants to go through or want to grow down through a different type of substrate. Much easier when you can fit your hand down. So I'm gonna just start seeing what plants, I'm gonna pull this out. These are a little on the dry side because I've left them for a few days. And then I'm just gonna see how this one looks. Since I'm not providing a stone in here, it'd be tempting to actually put both plants in, but they are gonna get big. This is like, you know, the, what the, what's great about a moss or a lichen terrarium and like using maybe something like a a ficus quercifolia is a, it's not going to grow very fast and it's not gonna outgrow the terrarium. You could keep it in the terrarium for, for years and years and years. But if you put a begonia in there, it's definitely going to grow, outgrow, and probably within a year growing season. So you wanna be very conscious of that. Well, that's kind of cool though. I like the I like the lightning strikes. I think that's almost a little bit more mysterious. I'm kind of going to go with that because I like the fact that this and the green lightning, I mean, it kind of just feels a little bit more trippy. And I'm going to add more soil. I'm going to run out of soil, so I'm going to open up that bag. And that will be the centerpiece. You know, sometimes if I put a stone in there and a smaller plant, 
and the stone is kind of the anchor, but this plant is really actually going to be the anchor here. I'm going to just break up the roots a little bit with this too, so it can have grow more freely outwards since it has that space. And these begonias are like really the types of begonias that you'd probably be growing in a terrarium anyway because they need a lot of that extra moisture. And uh, if you don't really give it to them, then they start getting kind of brittle leaves, brown leaves, that type of thing. So I could probably get this out in chunks and then break it up with my hand after I put a little water in it. And typically I would have a, a spray bottle here, but I don't know where it is. So I'm just using this like kind of water right here. And um, it's also nice to have like a little air sprayer or like a little air sprayer to get the dust, especially if it's like dry potting medium off. So if like whatever the type of air sprayer that you have to like clean your computer, the dust off your computer or anything along those lines, or uh, if you have like a little distilled water sprayer. And that's one thing I should mention, that's actually distilled water. And I try to only use distilled water when it comes to moss because moss is one of those things that actually like really works on like rainwater. And if you have something with too many minerals or if you have like a softener in your water, I don't think moss is gonna really enjoy that. And moss is a hard thing to screw up, especially if it's in a terrarium. And you know, if you have it out and you're kind of, it's in display, then it's a little bit more of a challenge to, to work with, especially this kind of moss that works in, um, you know, kind of more uh, darker, moister environments. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I'll use the rest of this soil, but I'm, I'm still going to use this on top and moss on the top, so I don't want to build it up too much. Like, I don't want the moss choking out the plant. So you want to give a little bit of space, just an inch or two, to move things around. There's more tools that come with this kit too, but I didn't bring, I didn't feel the need to bring them all here. I thought it was going to be a little overkill. Let me just put this stuff in first. I actually use this outside too. Shaved pine bark, I'm sure you could probably get it. You could probably even use fir bark, like if you're using that, if you have like reptiles and things like that, you could probably go to a pet shop and find something like this, or the fir bark is also pretty nice too, which has a bit more of a finer grain. So of course you could use the uh, orchid mix as well, but that is uh, less fine and more chunky. Yes, this is really pretty. You're kind of mimicking, I guess, a little bit of a forest floor, you know, which is fun. You know, you're using something that is less tropical, not tropical moss, but you're using my kind of more native moss. And then you have this subtropical, tropical plant that would like this kind of environment. So you're merging two worlds, like as we do with many of our plants that we have. They come from many different countries and regions, but they like maybe similar conditions or climates or temperatures. This is where you wish you had really tiny hands. And like I said, this begonia, if all goes well, will probably outgrow in a season. So you will have to do some maintenance, but that's okay. I like sometimes restarting my terrariums up. That I think is gonna look really cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna use, I have this nice chunk of moss and I could just lay that in. And these are already a little moistened. The only plant that is dry is really this plant. And the moss is actually gonna be able to keep some of the moisture around the begonia, which would also be nice because they're like little sponges. Okay, I'm gonna do a little light cushion moss in the back. And don't be afraid to like break up the moss. You don't have to leave it in these uh, chunks. Like you could get a piece of it like this. And let me just show you something like this. And then you just kind of embed that in there down. So if you have like a little piece to fill down there, then you could just kind of shove it in. And as long as its little rootlets are touching, it'll start to make itself at home. A little bit of more cushion moss. I'll have plenty of moss left over for more creations. I might end up doing something with this. I mean, I actually really like how this green kind of matches the terrarium. It's almost like, I'm, I'm gonna put this on one of the side tables outside of the bed. So 
you could almost imagine something else on the other side that's not exactly like this, kind of uh, matching it. And that way you could work, be a little creative. We're always thinking about creative ways to make some of our dark spaces uh, have plants. And you know, kind of the baseline that you could do is maybe get a fake plastic plant, which there's nothing wrong with that, having a nice uh, fake plastic plant that looks kind of real in a space. It's still a very calming effect. You might not get any of the other benefits from it. One of the other benefits of having a fake plant is you don't have to take care of it so much. Maybe you just have to dust it off from time to time. But plants like this could actually work as long as it gets some light. It needs some light, but not anything that's too strong. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm blanking it with, uh, with different mosses. And then I'm going to gonna see. It's hard to work from behind, so I'm just going to stick this in and see if I can move it around if need be. I like the idea of having two of these and you could kind of poke it in into the, the moss itself. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to add in here, almost forgot about them, are these British soldiers. And they should be already be on substrate. This is kind of what they look like. And you, they're, obviously you know how they're called British soldiers because they have that kind of like red, tall appearance. And yeah, lichens are this combination of uh, they have all different types of fungi and algae. So it's, it's, and it's usually a combination. It's not just like one fungi and one, one algae. It's usually a combination of fungi and algae that uh, create this new entity of lichen. And so I think I'm just gonna place these in here too. Sometimes you find these on wood substrate. Sometimes you find them on tops of stones. So they're very variable and Man, can they grow in all sorts of different environments. They could grow in some pretty harsh environments, like directly in the sun. Kind of like how this is this uh, seeded glass. And you just kind of have to look a little bit more. It's almost like a little fairy tale setting. You just have to look a little bit more at it and you might have to pop the top off in order to look at the little world beneath, which is so charming. Not sure if this will root up nicely, but I like the fact that the begonia has this kind of fuzzy leaf, like I didn't go with the gemella, but this one has a little bit of a fuzzy leaf as well. And what I'm gonna do is just give it a nice little water. And again, I'm using distilled water, so you can use your own tap water or whatever at your own risk, but I really wanna water it in. And you could use also um, your spray bottle. That would be fine too. And I'm gonna give this begonia a really good drink. The one thing about terrariums is that you wanna make sure that you're not completely oversaturating because the water is gonna stay in there and you don't want it really pulled up. I mean, the charcoal is only gonna do so much. Um, and then, you know, some people actually add like little springtails to this. There might actually be uh, springtail eggs like on the moss itself. I mean, it comes pretty sterile, but you just, it's sometimes it's really hard. You might get some springtails, but the springtails will clean up things in there as well. So that's an option as well. And it just looks like that. You could tie a little ribbon around it or anything you wanna do, but this is essentially the terrarium. And I, I put one little trilobite fossil in there. I might actually go ahead and just add a little fern fossil in there too, just to give somebody something else to kind of look at. Maybe stick it up like this. And then that way there'll be all these little delights to actually see in the terrarium. Having those little moments, having those little moments of delight or intrigue, something that has been made by hand by you. And this will be a perfect solution for the place that I wanna put it because like I said, it's not going to have, it's gonna have a lot of indirect light in an area where you're not going to want to have a tremendous amount of light. It's in a bedroom. So you don't maybe want to have like a big grow light above your bed. It's just gonna not be uh, pleasant. So you have to find something that kind of works with you and works for the plants uh, that you're going to be putting there. All right, guys, more DIY, more things on the Meadow House in the coming days. I'm so excited because we're like almost like 99% finished with this, but we still have a little way to go and there's a lot of details and I got to clean up because if I don't clean up, then we can't uh, move forward with the Meadow House. So thank you again and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.
Stay tuned here and on our sister channel at Flock Finger Lakes because next month we'll be doing a houseplant home tour and the before and after reno of the meadow house. In the meantime, check out our online houseplant courses from Houseplant Basics to the Houseplant Masterclass at homesteadbrooklyn.com. We'll see you in the next episode.